Alrighty, Hacksters! I don't know about you, but for me, an exciting Friday night means getting a package from the excellent Evan, Evan Upton, the founder of Raspberry Pi. Well, not directly from him, but some, you know, initiated by Evan. And it contains the new Raspberry Pi Pico W, which is the talk of the town right now. The newest um, and hottest, I would say, new uh, embedded programming record controller for IoT. And it's based on the Pico that we heard about uh, that was released last January in 2021. Um, I actually haven't gotten that much time to play around with it yet, but I'm excited to do so with the W. So let's check this out. First, we've got to open up the bag because that's the most exciting part. Let's face it. Oh, there's a little note in here. I love it when they come with notes. That's my favorite. We've got a little micro USB cable and Raspberry Pi pink. I wonder what they call this color. Um, with compliments. That's very nice. And here, let's get rid of that. We have the board. Oh, it comes in a little cut tape, like just like the Pico. I love that they really have designed these to be embeddable in your own product. So uh, they come <laughs> on a on a cut tape, and uh, ooh, look at it compared to the original. It is com pin compatible. These two boards are completely pin compatible. It is kind of cool how they didn't really have to switch up that much on the visual design because the first one had so much space taken up by that Raspberry Pi logo. Um, we'll dig into some more of the particulars about what got shifted around soon. But yeah, let's just take a look. It's still got that micro USB at the top. Um, here, obviously, is your shielded can with the uh, wireless doodads inside of it. <laughs> We've got a PCB antenna built in. And it's, as I mentioned, uh, pin compatible. It's the same pins. 0.1 inch um, castellated headers, so it's ripe for mounting onto your own circuit board. Smack it down, flat on the bottom, castellated edges, solder along the edges, bam! You can also get a version with headers in the future, not right now. I think that's going to be rele released later in the year, a version with headers. Um, but you know, you can always just get headers and solder them on, no problem. So this is the original, this is the new W, and we're going to dig into it right meow. Let's take a look at what the internet has to say about this. So, Evan's article about this uh, has a lot of interesting stuff in it. For example, um, the pricing. So, uh, the original Pico was $4. This one is $6, but check it out. Uh, <laughs> there are different versions. So, the Pico H, the original with headers, uh, is five dollars. The original uh, Pico is four dollars with headers. It's five. Uh, the W is at six dollars, and the Pico WH wireless with headers is seven dollars. So you know, uh, one dollar for extra headers, <laughs> one dollar, two dollars for extra wireless. Uh, they're all very affordable. Um, I've seen this compared. I think by our own uh, Gareth on our blog compared it to the twenty-nine dollar. RP2040 Connect from Arduino, which is basically like a, a souped up version of this, $30 for like a very similar uh, amount of connectivity and stuff, but with a bunch of sensors and stuff added on. Um, by comparison, you know, six or $7, $6 without headers. Ludicrous, ludicrous. And you can add whatever you want onto it. We're gonna get to this later, but uh, Sandeep Mystery made a really cool project adding on uh, a, Pimeroni Grow Kit, and uh, you know it, it looks beautiful and does some really cool stuff. So, you know you can always add on whatever you want. Uh, just just six dollars, incredible. Um, there is uh, an interesting thing here. So the uh, CYW four three four three nine from Infineon that's powering the wireless here supports both Bluetooth and Bluetooth Low Energy. Uh, so two kinds of Bluetooth, both possible in the future, not enabled right now. What you do have is Wi-Fi. So more specifically, uh, in the product brief, we've got a lot of specifics here. Uh, it's 2.4 gigahertz, AO 2.11, BGN wireless LAN support, an onboard antenna, and modular compliance cer certification. So it's uh, with that can on it, 
it makes it extra easy to embed it into your own projects products and not have to get extra wireless certification on top of what's already there. So it's nice for if you're building your own, your own wireless product for IoT. Um, you know, you've also got your dual ARM Cortex M0 uh, processors, I believe, M0 Plus maybe, um, deterministic bus fabric and rich peripheral set augmented with their unique programmable IO subsystem. So programmable IO is something I haven't quite gotten my head around yet, but I'll share with you where I'm learning about it. There, I found a good video on here. Ooh, we've got a bunch of analytics stuff showing up over there. We don't need that. Um, from Stack Smashing on YouTube, uh, they have a pretty in-depth video about Raspberry Pi's PIO uh, from the original Pico, which uh, maybe we'll see an update about the Pico W. Uh, also, our Adafruit has an introduction to RP2040 PIO with CircuitPython. So uh, the RP2040 is Raspberry Pi's custom silicon that both these boards are based on. CircuitPython is, of course, Adafruit's version of MicroPython. And uh, this board, out of the box, supports um, You've got uh, MicroPython as well as C and C++ and assembly. So uh, most of the tutorials seem to be geared, or, or more of the functionality seems to be geared toward MicroPython, but you can get started with the Pico SDK. And we'll take a look at those tools in a second too. Uh, Gustavo, thanks for joining us. Uh, these are dollars that I was talking about, the pricing, $6. Um, even though it's you know, a British board, uh, British company, the, uh, they're saying it's a $6 board. Um, Tariq says, hey, how are you, my friend? I am great. How are you? <laughs> uh, dope, a Pico with Wi-Fi. Yeah, so this little guy over here, Wi-Fi, possibly Bluetooth in the future. The hardware supports it, but the software is not there yet. So let's keep going. Um, we've got this wonderful ar article from Gareth. If you just go to hacksher.io slash news, or even just our front page, you'll be able to find this wonderful in-depth article. Let's see some of the highlights. Um, he points out that, you know, there's not that much difference. This really is just sort of a Pico with wireless. It's pin compatible. He mentions some of the differences. For example, there's uh, eight state machines, two banks of PIO, uh, or two PIO modules with four state machines each on the Pico. One of those has been used for the wireless uh, capabilities. So now there's seven state machines available. Uh, but, you know, most things are going to be cross compatible. Uh, Gareth is not happy that the serial wire debug header has been moved um, up to the. Uh, let me show you. Uh, <laughs> so notice how down here you've got that. Uh, SW debug interface down here, and it says debug on it. It's even got a little arrow. That is no longer down there. That's where our antenna is now. Now it's up here, so you don't have those castellated um, pins anymore. You would have to solder that separately. But that is something that you can do. Let's go back to the article. And let's see. Oh, you've got a pinout. There's another thing um, interesting. Oh yeah, another interesting thing you point out is that the user addressable LED is still uh, addressed as LED on the pin alias, but uh, instead of being uh, addressing a pin on the RP2040, it's now addressing a pin on the wireless module. Interesting, but it doesn't really affect you unless you're doing more like low level stuff. Interesting stuff. Um, you can go check this out. Oh yeah. He mentions that there's a uh, KiCad board that you can create yourself. You can get it manufactured. Uh, this carrier board is open source, and you can uh, use it to break out the board for all kinds of interesting stuff. Um, there's also files, design files for the Pico W itself in Eagle format. So that's not open source as much as the KiCad files, because KiCad itself is open source. Eagle, you may have to pay for, um, but yeah both options there. So um, let's just make sure we covered everything here. Oh, yeah, an interesting point here. They highlight the fact that this is strong enough and powerful enough for pro users uh, with the large on-chip memory, the symmetric dual-core processor complex, deterministic, etc. Um, 
unrivaled power and flexibility for professional users. And then for beginners, there's detailed documentation, a polished MicroPython port, and a UF2 bootloader in ROM. So that uh, providing the lowest possible barrier to entry for beginner and hobbyist users. So they're really trying to cater to both sides here, as well as having that low, low price point. Um, this brings up the other thing that I was trying to remember, which is that these boards can run the same code. They're pin compatible. They can run uh, the same MicroPython code, but there's different firmware. So uh, if you want to run the same micro MicroPython on <laughs> code on both boards, you can do that, but you'll have to recompile it for the W. The Pico W uses slightly different firmware, so it needs to be recompiled. But besides that, um, you, know, you can just do that. Take your old code, recompile it uh, on the W. Super tiny Wi-Fi shield, amazing! It is super tiny, look at it! Uh, what else have we got here? Go back to the internet. Um, also, there's a bunch of documentation available. There's this data sheet, which has the pinout and also the surface mount footprint, all this good stuff. Um, all kinds of stuff in the data sheet here. You can find applications, information, programming the flash, etc. cetera. Um, Stuff about availability. They've guaranteed availability through 2028. I think, oh, it says January XXXX, but I think it's 2028 um, from one of the other documents. And there is a, a sort of ebook that they've put out called Connecting to the Internet with Raspberry Pi Pico W, Getting Raspberry Pi Pico W Online with C slash C++ or MicroPython. And um, you can see that it has a bunch of stuff getting on the internet with C SDK, with MicroPython, uh, making HTTP requests, and building HTTP servers. That's really cool. A simple server for static pages. I would really love to try that one out. Just like see if I can um, make a little drop anywhere, little Wi-Fi server, page server. It'd be really cute. Um, this is something that I thought was a really fun project to do with the ESP8266, and uh, I think it'll be fun with this one too. So I don't know why, but I find those really charming, just like a, a device that serves a page, and um, and this guy can do it too. Uh, yeah, I mentioned in the description of this video that uh, the ESP8266 is, of course, like a cheaper drop anywhere Wi-Fi web server, but... It's not nearly as powerful. This guy has 26 GPIOs available. 26 of them! 26 of them. So you can make a little HTTP interface that controls stuff on it that anyone can hit just by connecting to its little server. And then, you know, one of my favorite things to do on the ESP8266 is just have a little, you know, that little demo that's basically a button that you push to turn the LED on and off on board. Uh, you could easily do that with this, but you would have 26 different things connected. Or, well, you could, yeah because the, and then have buttons on the server to control each of them. Why not? Uh, you could, you could not do that. You could do something else. You could do controlling an LED via, oh, this is exactly actually what I was saying. <laughs> controlling an LED via web server. They have that exact demo on here. So I probably will go do that right after this. Um, I'm not gonna make you sit through me uh, downloading the UF2 files and, and doing the firmware and everything. Uh, they also have an asynchronous web server handling HTTP requests asynchronously rather than blocking. Um, all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, there's no direct method for it to discover from the software whether it's running on a Pi Pico or a Pico W, but uh, yeah, they have some tips for that as well. All kinds of cool stuff in here. Um, so that's all in the connecting to the internet with Raspberry Pi Pico W document. Now I want to show you this project by Sandeep, which is super cute. Give a plant a personality using the Raspberry Pi Pico W. Um, I love that he has ready to go. And not only does it tell you, so it's basically your plant is going to tell you uh, when it needs to be watered. And it's not just going to say plant number X needs watering. It's like giving you little little jokes and stuff and like wonderful, wonderful day to grow. It feels like very, I would love to wake up to this kind of a message and I wouldn't be like, oh, I need to go water my plant now. I'd be like, oh, I need to go water my best buddy now. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's really cute. And also it's a really in-depth tutorial that tells you a lot of stuff. This Pimeroni grow kit looks pretty cool. 
uh, the Grow Kit Mini, I should say. It's designed for the Raspberry Pi. Uh, it'll run with this with this board as well. It's got all kinds of cool stuff in here. So that's a really fun one to dig through. I can't stop. These these pictures are so beautiful. Okay. So uh, you can check out that project. All these links are linked in the description of the video, of course. A uh, few last things to go through. There's also a GitHub with a bunch of Pico examples that includes ones for the Pi Pico W. Um, oh, this is for C and C++. Uh, yeah, you've got the getting started and readme in the Pico SDK, etc. Just check that out. Also linked below. Uh, Pico Extras is an interesting one. This repo, as they say, has additional libraries that are not yet ready for inclusion on the Pico SDK proper or are just useful but don't necessarily belong in the Pico SDK. So they kept the Pico SDK kind of trimmed down and lean, but there's all this extra stuff that you can explore if there's stuff that you want to do that isn't necessarily included in there. They see Pico Playground for buildable example code using these extra libraries. Um, and then finally, uh, the Raspberry Pi Pico page on raspberrypi.org or .com mm, uh, does have a single page for both the Pico and the Pico W. It's all sort of one ecosystem. There's RP2040 on here, uh, the Pico, the Pico W. And then if you, uh, you can find the book, Getting Started with MicroPython on the Raspberry Pi Pico all kinds of documentation linked from there directly. And uh, you can go, uh, when you go click to buy the Raspberry Pi Pico, it, I think by default, links to the regular one without wireless. Um, can you select that net? No, yeah, the, the one with headers is coming later this year, but uh, you can choose wireless, uh, yes, from the dropdown. Choose your country, get some options. Of course, uh, not, here yet and or already sold out like people got very excited about this it was launched just a day or two ago so uh you know all out of stock on adafruit you know good luck finding one but uh if you want to find out where to buy one this is the spot just go to raspberrypi.com find the link in the description below uh go to the pico page and you'll find a bunch of cool documentation information about the chip itself the rp2040 the regular pico and the pico w and books and documentation and all that good stuff. So yeah, you can go read um, Evan's announcement for uh, the quick lowdown. We've got some more digging into it. I didn't even cover everything that Gareth dug into. It's a really wonderful article uh, from the perspective of someone who has like a ton of, ton of experience with this stuff. Um, be sure to check out Raspberry Pi's release documents on this. The, uh, there's a product brief, which may or may not be available to the public. There's a data sheet though. And there's this connecting to the internet with Raspberry Pi Pico W, full of information, uh, everything that you need. There's also a really good video by uh, Stack Smashing that I've linked below about the PIO. This is gonna take me a while to wrap my head around because it's something that's spe specific and special for the RP2040. Um, Adafruit also has their, uh, documentation on that. And then finally, be sure to check out this project. It is so cute and it's so beautifully put together. This is like, I don't really dream of documentation, but if I did, this is, this would be like my best dream. <laughs> All right. Ooh, we have a, an unpleasant comment. Sorry about that. Um, okay. Thank you for joining us. Uh, let us know what you would build, what you plan to build, if you're lucky enough to have uh, one of these in your hands already. Uh, I can't wait to, to put something together with this. Now that I can build a little web server, I'm just like itching to get started with it. And um, yeah, good thing to have a long weekend, I guess. Thanks for joining. Uh, have a beautiful rest of your day and a beautiful weekend and uh, hack on.